Hi everybody, Lindsay here from Be Primo, and today I wanted to talk about how to get over your ex. Breakups are hard, especially when you're the one who's getting broken up with. A breakup makes you feel awful, sad, confused, sick, and all kinds of negative emotions. It makes you do irrational things, like drink a whole bottle of wine while crying or not eating anything for days. Everything is awful. You'll never find anyone else again, like your ex, and you'll never love again. That's at least how I felt when my ex broke up with me. It was some of the worst emotional pain I've ever felt in my life, and it took me six months before I was able to fully get over and move on from the breakup. So here's what you can do to get over your ex, and hopefully it won't take you as long as it did for me. First, I want to say that you're going to have feelings, and that's okay. No one gets over heartbreak overnight. Being upset is only natural, so don't try to suppress your feelings. Give yourself a few days, maybe even a week or two, to be sad. You can be really sad, like listen to sad music, watch sad movies, stay burrowed under your blankets, cry a lot, however it is that you need to get your emotions out. But once that time is up, turn your focus towards healing. You'll still be upset, but your feelings won't be center stage anymore. You're going to be looking forward from now on. No contact. During your time of all the feelings, you want to cut off all contact with your ex, and you don't want to make any big decisions. And the faster you can end any contact or remove any reminders whatsoever of them, the easier it'll be to move on. Absence in this case makes the heart forget. Having Instagram or Facebook notifications pop up with their face is just going to make you think of how great they were, even if they weren't, and it's even worse if you actually see them or talk to them in person. Definitely don't do that. One reason I had so much difficulty getting over my ex is because we went to school together and worked together, so I had to see them even when I didn't want to. This was basically torture, and it felt like my heart was just getting pulled open a little more each time we ran into each other. If you're in a similar situation where you can't avoid your ex completely, remove yourself as best you can from situations where you might run into each other. If you have common friends, let your friends know that you want to spend time with them. You just can't be around your ex for now. And definitely don't make your friends choose between you and your ex. It's just awkward for them and it can make things uncomfortable when you're hanging out. If you know that you have to see your ex at work or in a class, Spend some time mentally preparing yourself beforehand. Take five to 10 minutes, taking some slow, deep breaths, practice meditation, even give yourself a pep talk. Pick up some healthy practices that'll also help calm you. Set boundaries and keep them. This goes in line with no contact. You're going to want to reach out to your ex. Your ex might try to reach out to you, but don't do it. Don't bend your rules or let them step past your boundaries while you're still emotionally vulnerable. This always ends up badly for you. Yes, just one text will hurt and it can send you down a slippery slope of maybe getting back together, but really you're just pouring salt into an open wound situation. Part of keeping your boundaries means you have to have enough respect for yourself to enforce them. You have to learn to say no even when your emotionally raging brain is flip-flopping around as well as have the confidence to say no. Don't worry about how your ex will feel if you stand firm and say no to them. They broke up with you after all, so screw them. These are your boundaries and therefore they deserve to be respected. Stop romanticizing them. We view our relationships with rose-colored glasses once they're over, but just because you want to think that your ex is perfect and that you two were made for each other, doesn't mean that was the reality. Breakups tend to happen for a reason, so stop thinking about your ex as if they were the only one for you and that everything was wonderful when you two were together. Whether they were actually terrible or a nice enough person, but just not the right fit, it's much easier to get over them when you take off the glasses and th see things for what they really were. I had those same rosy thoughts right after my ex broke up with me, but the longer we were broken up, the more and more I began to realize all the reasons we weren't good for each other. My ex was selfish and lied about committing to our relationship, and I was way too needy, bending over backwards to make things work. 
A big part of me getting over my ex was recognizing that our relationship was far from perfect and understanding that us breaking up was actually the better outcome. Focus on yourself and create a sense of purpose. Instead of spending your days ruminating about how great your relationship used to be and how much you miss your ex, focus on how you can make yourself a better person and learn to enjoy being single. Pick up a hobby that maybe you stopped doing when you were in the relationship. Learn a new skill. Spend more time with friends. Go out and meet new people. If you feel lost now that your ex has left you, create a new sense of purpose for yourself, even if it's just a short-term goal. For example, maybe you've been putting off going to the gym. Set a goal for yourself to go to the gym at least twice a week and build that habit of exercise. Or maybe you stopped playing guitar when you were dating. Pick it up and start practicing again. Keeping yourself busy in a positive and productive way will help you forget about your ex, boost your confidence, and it'll start attracting new people to you. Learn to let go of any negative feelings towards your ex. A vital part of moving on from your breakup is when you can come to a point where you don't hate your ex anymore. You don't want to make them jealous and you don't hope that they're miserable without you. You just, well, you feel mostly indifferent to them. You wish them the best, but your interest in them stops there. Your thoughts aren't consumed by your ex and your negative feelings. You're not trash talking them. Instead, you're thinking about that project at work. You're thinking about your Friday plans. You're just thinking about life the way you normally would before you started dating. Eventually, you'll come to a place where you can look back on your relationship without pain and even learning something about yourself from it. Most of the relationships in your life are going to fail and that's okay. But each time it doesn't work out, it's an opportunity to reflect on what worked and what didn't work. Do you find any patterns in your dating that always end badly? Are there certain qualities that you need in a person that you kept missing before? Is there anything that you can do to be a better partner? While breakups hurt pretty badly, remember that they're never the end of all things good. They're the end of one chapter to your life and the beginning of the next. And this chapter is full of new, beautiful, and exciting opportunities. I hope you found this video helpful if you're going through a breakup right now, but I also want to hear from you. What's your worst breakup story, and do you have any methods that you use to get over it? Share the story in your comments. Thanks so much for watching, and please like and subscribe!